Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing Wormtail, aka Peter Pettigrew. Wormtail gets a bad rap and has arguably the worst reputation of the entire franchise, with perhaps the exception of Umbridge. No one, not even Wormtail's allies, held him in a very high regard, and one of the reasons that people looked down on him was that they saw him as submissive and weak. Voldemort and the Death Eaters disrespected him, never truly giving him the time of day. Wormtail was instrumental in Voldemort's resurgence, so it's a testament to Voldemort's sinister nature and Wormtail's submissive nature that he could disrespect him so openly. At one point, Wormtail was sent to Snape's house to assist him, but Snape ended up treating him like his servant, a supreme gesture of disrespect. I was under the impression that the Dark Lord sent you here to assist me. To assist you, yes, but not to serve you drinks and to clean your house. Wormtail was a British pureblood wizard born in 1959 or 1960. He had pale skin, unhealthy hair that was constantly falling out, and blue eyes. He was a sniveling excuse for a man whose loyalties only lay where there was power, and he did not value friendship or love in the way that most do. Despite serving both sides of the battle at one point or another, neither respected him, and those that Wormtail betrayed hated him because he was, morally, an awful, awful person. And while I agree with the sentiment that Wormtail was a despicable person morally, I am not of the impression that he was an untalented wizard. In my opinion, Wormtail is one of the most underrated characters in the franchise, power-wise, as if we break everything down, we can see that he was actually able to achieve quite a lot magically. Was he the most powerful wizard of all time? Definitely not. But were there worse wizards than him? Certainly. Many witches and wizards wrote off his magical ability due to his appearance and meek demeanor. The truth is that Pettigrew was a talented wizard, but he was also equally mentally weak and impressionable. Sure, Pettigrew didn't perform well at school, but this could have been for any number of reasons and everyone knows that many people struggle in their respective fields in their formative years. It's entirely possible that he was just a late bloomer. I think that it would be safe to say that Pettigrew's friends never truly respected him and viewed him as a little beneath them, despite being the good guys. After years and years of being dismissed and not taken seriously, Pettigrew simply hit a breaking point, a point at which he sought power independently from those that he knew. When he turned to Voldemort, Pettigrew saw an opportunity to become his own man. Voldemort probably saw that he was decent at magic, but also mentally weak, and he took advantage of that. James, Sirius, and Lupin were ultimately good people, but they were also arrogant jerks in their youth, and Pettigrew, who was perpetually looked down upon by them, eventually made a choice, as awful as it was, to betray them. His tale could easily be an allegory for bullying and the bullied kid going down the wrong path. Pettigrew grew up in the shadow of others. Had historical circumstances been just a little different, it's not out of the question that he might have really flowered in a more independent environment just a few years later, at last free of the rather pompous and arrogant friends with which he'd spent his teenage years. While at school, Professor McGonagall expressed that Peter was less talented than his friends, going as far as to say that he was hopeless at dueling, and while serving Lord Voldemort, he too denoted him as a poor wizard. But among his childhood companions, the Marauders, there really wasn't much of an indication that he was significantly less talented than any of them, and the other three, Sirius Black, James Potter, and Remus Lupin, were all very talented wizards. In fact, Wormtail would go on to become far more versed in the dark arts than any of them, opening up and expanding his magical arsenal and taking it to another level altogether. So why does Wormtail get such a bad rap? JK Rowling herself said the following on this matter. It turned out that he was a better wizard than they knew, referring to the Marauders. The truth is that when Peter was truly pushed, he was able to accomplish a lot. Let's take a look at some of his accomplishments. With help from the other Marauders, Peter was able to become an Animagus at the early age of 15. Hogwarts Transfiguration Professor Minerva McGonagall only achieved this feat at the age of 17, and she was under direct instruction from Transfiguration Master Albus Dumbledore. This really speaks to how impressive this feat was, 
despite having been helped by his friends. At the Wagadu School of Magic, a school known for its intensive focus on self-transfiguration, students become an Amegai by the age of 14. Peter, attending a regular magical school with no particular focus on transfiguration, achieved this one year older. Peter was of course an unregistered Animagus, meaning that he did not report his Animagus status to the Ministry of Magic, something that all Animagi are meant to do. This allowed him to abuse his ability. Dumbledore freighted it well when he said that, Animagi are usually people who seek to avoid punishment when they broke the law. In his Animagus form, Pettigrew hid from the Order of the Phoenix, Death Eaters, and the Ministry. He was even able to falsify his death. After escaping Sirius after Voldemort's first defeat, he was able to successfully frame him for his crimes, then fake his own death, simultaneously killing 12 people with one curse. After this, he lived for years in his Animagus form, a rat. Pettigrew stayed in his Animagus form for 12 whole years, something that I can't imagine was an easy feat, and became the Weasley family's pet rat, Scabbers. In addition to becoming an Animagus, which is an advanced form of transfiguration, Pettigrew was also versed in Conjuration, another extremely advanced branch of transfiguration. Conjuration, which allows individuals to transfigure an object out of thin air, was only taught to talented students at the Newt level. Pettigrew uses Conjuration in 1996 when he produces ropes which bound Harry Potter to Tom Riddle Sr's grave. It has been stated that the only form of transfiguration more difficult than conjuration was human transfiguration, which he also achieved. Potions Peter, under Voldemort's instruction, was able to produce both the rudimentary body potion and the regeneration potion. The first potion allowed Voldemort to achieve his basic, rudimentary form, and the latter returned the Dark Lord to his former glory. Both potions were highly advanced dark magical potions which Pettigrew would have had no experience with. Sure, Voldemort was probably a good teacher, but he still pulled it off successfully and didn't pull a Seamus Finnegan. Peter also helped Barty Crouch Jr. to produce the Polyjuice Potion, which allowed Crouch to assume the identity of Alistair Moody. This leads us to Peter's next skill, dueling. Despite Professor McGonagall expressing in his younger years that he was hopeless at dueling, Pettigrew went on to become fairly successful in numerous dueling endeavors. In order to obtain the ingredients necessary to impersonate Alistair Moody, Pettigrew had to try and trap Moody, which he did along with Barty Crouch Jr. Alistair Moody was a Scottish pureblood wizard and is considered by many to be the most famous aura of all time. He was an Order of the Phoenix member, dark wizard catcher, and warrior. Moody served with great distinction during the First Wizarding War and lost an eye, leg, and nose in battle against evildoers. Moody is personally responsible for a large number of the witches and wizards in Azkaban, and this earned him quite the reputation amongst the dark wizard community. This makes Pettigrew's achievement of capturing him all the sweeter. Additionally, though it wasn't much of a duel, Pettigrew makes quick work of Cedric Diggory with Avada Kedavra. Though Cedric was young and didn't see it coming, he was considered to be a talented student and stood no chance against Wormtail. This also spoke to Pettigrew's skill in all manners of the dark arts, as Avada Kedavra is not a particularly easy spell to cast. Avada Kedavra is one of the three unforgivable curses, and in order to utilize it properly, it requires extreme concentration. Additionally, in 1981, the same year Pettigrew framed Sirius for the death of 12 muggles, he utilized a dark, advanced, and powerful blasting curse. The curse was strong enough to murder 12 people, destroy hundreds of feet of sewer system, and leave a 40-foot crater in the ground. I'm certain that Peter was far more skilled in the dark arts than any of the other marauders would have been. In addition to the above mentioned, which feature some of his most notable accomplishments, Peter also helped to produce and design the marauders map, a highly advanced piece of magic, showed extreme wand versatility, seemingly using any and all wands that he got a hold of with no issue, despite not yet winning the wands allegiance, and regularly used non-verbal magic. Wands and incantations generally help witches and wizards to channel their magic, allowing them to achieve a more accurate, potent result. However, truly powerful witches and wizards are able to produce magic regardless of these two factors. Peter was one of those wizards. 
So, as you can see, Pettigrew was able to achieve a lot during his time in the Wizarding World. Sure, when it comes to Death Eaters, Pettigrew is no Snape or Bellatrix, but he did end up becoming a reasonably powerful wizard. And that's it for this video. What do you guys think? Am I missing something? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.